Hello, my name is Carl Gibbs, and today I'm reading my favorite picture book by Martin Luther King Jr. This book is being illustrated by Robert Castilla, the author David Atler, and the publisher is Scholastics. Martin Luther King Jr. was one of America's greatest leaders. He was a powerful speaker and he spoke out against laws which kept black people out of many schools and jobs. He led protests and marches demanding fair laws for all people. Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January 15, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. Martin's father was a pastor. His mother had been a teacher. Martin had an older sister, Willie Christine, and a younger brother, Alfred Daniels. Young Martin liked to play baseball, football, basketball. He liked to ride his bicycle and sing. He often sang in his father's church. Young Martin played in his backyard with his friends. One day he was told that two of his friends would no longer play with him because, he, because they were white and he was black. Martin cried. He didn't understand why the color of his skin should matter to anyone. Martin's mother told him that many years ago, Black people were brought in chains in America and sold as slaves. She told him that long before Martin was born, slaves had been set free. However, there were still some people who did not treat black people fairly. In Atlanta where Martin lived and elsewhere in the United States, there were white only signs. Black people were not allowed in some parks, schools, hotels, restaurants, even schools. Blacks were kept out of many jobs. Martin learned to read home before he was old enough to start school. All through his childhood, he read books about black leaders. Martin was a good student. He finished high school two years early and was just 15 years he entered Morehouse College in Atlanta. At college, Martin decided to become a minister. After Martin was graduated from Morehouse, he studied for his doctorate at Boston University. While he was there, he met Coloretta Scott. She was, stu she was studying music, then they fell in love and married. In 1954, Martin Luther King Jr. began his first job as a pastor in Montgomery, Alabama. The next year, Rosa Park, a black woman, was arrested in Montgomery for sitting on a white-only section of a bus. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. led a protest. Blacks throughout the city refused to ride the bus. Dr. King said, there comes a time when people get tired of being kicked about. One night when Dr. King was at a meeting, someone threw a bomb into his house. Martin's followers were very angry. They wanted to fight. Martin told them, go home peacefully. We must love our white brothers, he said. We must meet hate with love. The bus protest had lasted almost a year. When it ended, there were no more white-only sections of the bus. Dr. King decided to move back to Atlanta in 1960. There he continued to lead a peaceful protest against white-only waiting rooms, lunch counters, restrooms. He led many marches for freedom. In 1963, Dr. King led the biggest march of all, the March on Washington. More than 200,000 black and white people followed him. I have a dream, he said in his speech. I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. The next year in 1964, Dr. King was awarded one of the greatest honors any man can win, the Nobel Prize. The country was changing, new laws were passed, black people Blacks could go to the school, same school as whites. They could go to the same stores, restaurants, hotels. White only signs were against the law. Dr. King told his fellow followers in the protest peacefully, but there are some riots and some violence. Then in April, 1968, Dr. King went to Memphis, Tennessee. He planned to march so black and white garbage workers could get the same pay for the same work. On April 4th in Memphis, Dr. King stood outside a motel room. Another man, James Earl Ray, was hiding nearby. He pointed a rifle at Dr. King. 
He fired the gun. An hour later, Dr. King was dead. Martin Luther King Jr. dreamed of a world free of hate, prejudice, and violence. Carved on the stone which marks his grave are the words, I'm free at last. The end.